Are we talking to you on cultural diplomacy as a useful option for peace building in Africa? As Africans, you should as accept with me that culture and diplomacy are in, in, this, in, this, in the soul of Africans. We, for a long time in history, have learned the, the, the style of doing things in a smooth way in terms of relationship with neighbors and, and nations and communities. So it is not a strange thing when we come to the discuss what is cultural diplomacy and give a definition to it, we will know that it is something that has been part of Africa uh, as we develop as a people. And uh, within the, the last 50 years, um, Africa has developed politically and economically so greatly. And uh, the UNDP commands Africa and the road that since the independence movements in 1960s, Africa has had the highest number of co countries operating on the democratic systems. This is very true. And uh, that gives hope for Africa because in the next, if we count, if we add another 50 years to Africa, we think we should be proud that we have a future, that uh, our people will become more democratic and uh, relationship building and and uh, our government's uh, rulership we, we improve in terms of democracy. But uh, before 2008, uh, the, 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 uh, the Millennium Development Goals that were designed by the UN um, were moving uh, well in terms of development in Africa, but with the economic crisis, uh, they dropped. Yeah. Well, uh, and uh, we have had a lot of backsliding. So um, global financial crisis had major impacts on developments across Africa, slowing down the rate of uh, poverty decrease. And the World Bank and the IMF estimate that by 2015, poverty rate, we, we, uh, which um, was estimated to be dropped by 36%, we go up to 38%. And the, the, the additional 2% translates into 20 million people being lifted of, out of poverty. So, and we have had a lot of uh, environmental challenges and um, climate change impact on Africa. And uh, it, is, it is sad to, to hear that if this trend continues, um, you know, if this trend continues, an additional six million people in the region, in the region of sub-Saharan sub Africa, will have to suffer a lot of diseases and, um, and epidemics and, and agricultural losses of up to, to 26 billion US dollars in 2060. And uh, Beyond these uh, economic and environmental factors, the African continent suffers a lot of multiple conflicts. And this is, this is the issue we are discussing. But, um, um, and uh, it is sad again to hear that uh, uh, um, out of the 55 countries, I said 55 countries in Africa because I include, <laughs> you hear from the first speaker, we, it's my professor, and we have had a lot of exchanges and arguments on who, who is an African. And so I include Morocco as an African country. And I'm happy that my friend here was able to, to say proudly that uh, Afri uh, Morocco is an African country. So we have 50, 55 countries, and only six out of the 55 countries are, uh, are, not, um, are free of conflicts. So it's not an impressive uh, news. So we have to develop uh, new methods of dealing with peace, especially uh, dealing with conflicts, especially post conflict building, uh, peace building processes, more than what is already um, on, on ground. Uh, it is on this note that uh, I would propose cultural diplomacy as an option for, for post-conflict uh, peace building. And so we now have to understand what is cultural diplomacy. Cultural diplomacy, um, according to Professor Kishore Chakraborty, the first person that gave a lecture today, he defines cultural diplomacy as the use and sharing of cultural products, practices, and interactions to influence other nations or cultures for mutual understanding and problem solving. 
it is very difficult to discuss diplomacy without stating the intention for diplomacy because uh, the, the diplomacy suggests reasons why you have to engage somebody. You, there, there, are, there are always, uh, and uh, oh, if, you, if you have to consult all the literature on diplomacy, you will see that communication, negotiation, mutual understanding, peace building uh, form the, the main characteristics of what diplomacy is. So um, if, we, if we agree on the, on the, on the premise that uh, the diplomacy, culture and diplomacy are the soul of the African people, we have to understand uh, what is Africa and who is an African. And uh, I got the definition from the American Heritage Dictionary, <laughs> which uh, was revealed in 1999. And uh, uh, the dictionary states that Africa is the second largest continent in the world, connecting Asia by the eastmost of Zeus, lying between the Mediterranean Sea, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Indian Ocean. And on this point also, I disagree with my professor that uh, Libya and Israel and Iran, Iran or Iraq are not part of Africa. Because if, if we take this definition seriously, that gives a picture of the geographic, the, 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 the geographic mapping of Africa, we cannot consider these countries as, uh, as part of Africa. We have had a lot of troubles already. We don't want to take more from <laughs> So, uh, but uh, coming to the definition of who is an African, it becomes very problematic to accept what, uh, what, uh, what, what qualities or what futures should define an African. It's difficult to say it's an African. We define an African based on skin color. And then uh, it's difficult to say somebody from Morocco is an African because he has a white skin. But I'm from Africa and I have a black skin. So if we define an African just by the skin color or you know, by the race, it's, it's, it's not sufficient. Or you define an African by the contributions he has made to the African continent. And there are people who are not giving the intelligence. They are, of course, Africans. They are not giving the intelligence or the word or, or the, the knowledge to make uh, contributions to the developments in Africa. So when people define an African based on contribu the contributions of, of who an African is and what he has contributed to developments in Africa is, I think, rather uh, insufficient. But uh, we can def define Africans by our shared history, of course. But maybe other factors can, can add up to that, because we have a shared history. But of course, we know that uh, the, the top five countries, I will show the, the next slide will be the map. Maybe I should just go there. The top five countries there, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt seem not to. Uh, accept fully that they are the Africans because they have they, they share some kind of cultural values with the Asian nations. So it's not sufficient, of course, to uh, dis discuss uh, to, to define Africans based on our shared history and uh, common cultural values or language. Because we have in Nigeria alone, we have about 250 ethnic groups speaking about 500 languages. So who is an African if you have to speak uh, uh, in French and I have to speak in English? And this is not our original languages. Or if I have to speak in Tiv language and you have to speak in uh, an Igbo language. So it's not sufficient. I define an African as, uh, or Africans as the historical people of Africa and their, descend their descendants in the diaspora or who share the same or similar cultural values. And uh, I, I got a quotation from Chester Higgins. He's a poet and, uh, and uh, a photographer who wrote that we are not Africans because we are born in Africa, but we are Africans because Africa is born in us. So when we have the, the thing about Africa, that culture, and the history that makes us who we are, then we 
we make a, um, we give a picture of who is in Africa. So this is the map of Africa. You are you may be familiar with this map, and I, I brought it here to to point out the fact that Africa is. Uh, is, is, the con is the only continent in the world that is gifted with, with the environment surrounding it and within it to give us all we need to make a lot of progress. We have diverse people with diverse cultures. The, we have the seas around us to, to enhance our economy. And we have a lot of things, the cultures, the culture of the world is embedded in Africa. So this map gives a picture where the people in Nigeria relate to the people in Cameroon, the people in Mali relate to the people in Nigeria, and the people in Nigeria relate to the people in South Africa. We bring these cultures together. We will build the world, build an African, African people that there will be no conflicts and there will be no crisis within the, the continent. So what is the what is what what are conflicts and what what, what is the nature of conflicts in Africa? Uh, I took this uh, definition from my, um, a very renowned professor and uh, His Excellency Yasai Yakis, who said a conflict is a divergent ap approach on an issue by two or more parties. And this divergence or disagreements may persist for a relatively long time before resulting into a confrontation. I, I will rely more on the second part of this definition because the 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 the, the armed com confrontation actually represents the, the kind of conflict that um, uh, we are looking at, because we can disagree on an issue and have a conflict, but that will not uh, be sufficient. The sufficient conflict to engage us in in exchanging uh, arms. And uh, I got this record from the, the UN uh, statistics uh, on, on Africa, that between 1968 and 2009, more than 42 wars were fought in Africa, and the vast majority of them were intrastate conflicts. So and this map shows the, the number of conflicts within Africa compared to the rest of the world. You, can, you, should, you should focus on the blue portions of the, and the light blue portions of the, within Africa we have Mali, Nigeria, Cameroon, and um, Libya, Egypt, Sudan, Uganda, and Congo, and uh, Somalia. And uh, my doctor is going to become uh, uh, my doctor friend is going to become the president soon. And I told him in the in the train that he should have uh, an agenda to solve the situation of conflicts in Somalia. So this is the situation we have, and we have to propose a a method that we have to deal with this situation. Uh, we must not allow it uh, to, to the peripheral systems that already exist that doesn't uh, deal with the roots of the, uh, you know, the, the causes of the conflicts in Africa. So, uh, there are two types of conflicts in, in Africa, the, in, the interstate conflicts, you mentioned this in your speech, I was happy to hear that. And uh, we have the intrastate conflicts, and uh, it is it is it's good news to hear that in the last 20 years we have not uh, had uh, these uh, intrastate conflicts, and they are usually between states, the parties that are clearly defined. They use the uh, military to engage uh, uh, to engage each other, and uh, they, they actually have conflicts based on 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 uh, the disputes based on border issues. And then we have the intrastate conflicts, and the the parties to this conflict sometimes are not easily identifiable, and the conflicts between conflict between state and non-state actors or conflict between state uh, and non-state actors. So and they involve uh, civilian combats. They, they target some, most of the time they target civilians and sometimes the government. And this is what Africa is suffering now. Africa is, is suffering uh, the community, one community fighting another community or one, one ethnic group fighting another ethnic Yeah, so what are the causes? We are going to look at the challenges and we'll discuss how we can uh, 
develop um, uh, the, the, the theory of cultural diplomacy as a working tool to deal with um, conflict, the post-conflict peace building in Africa. So um, what is peace building? Peace building is a gradual process of creating and renewing friendship between two parties in both pre-conflict and post-conflict times. And cultural diplomacy uses the machinery of soft power to guarantee relationship management between cultures, nations, corporate groups, or individuals. The, 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 the concept of soft power, hard power, smart power was developed by Joseph Nye and uh, uh, the, uh, the fall of the, the, the USSR. And uh, he emphasized that it is time that nations should begin to use what we attract other nations to them, rather than using military force or, or economic force to, to impose their identity or their, their will on other nations. So the, the machinery of soft power is, is actually cultural diplomacy. When you have the tools of cultural diplomacy, you can attract cultures, you can attract nations. And soft power is opposed to hard power because it uses cultural values, like I said, and cultural products and cultural exchanges for the purposes of attracting and influencing the other, for mutual understanding and peace, peaceful coexistence. And uh, these, these cultural in interchange exchanges must not be understood as the unhealthy competition that sometimes um, you know, seem to arise when two cultures come together. It, if it becomes a competition, then un an unhealthy com competition for that matter, then it is no longer um, a genuine uh, exchange between two cultures for, for the purposes of attraction and peace building. So I have here five uh, models for, of, of cultural diplomacy in peace building. The first is cross-cultural festivals. What does Africa, uh, what, uh, what uh, in, in, all, in all African cultures we have festivals. We have to develop the machinery to 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 develop to, to build programs that will bring this this uh, festivals to the fore, so that the cultures we come together to to begin to to leverage on 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 the opportunities in in re reorientating themselves about about knowledge of other the other the other the knowledge of other cultures. If we succeed in doing this, we will be building peace gradually. And uh, if we begin to organize music, music concerts among cultures, it will be a tool. It's a music is a powerful tool of bringing people together, people of different backgrounds. When we have musical contacts, we have uh, musical concerts. We have. Uh, we have artists from different backgrounds coming together and creating a forum for, for interchange or developing programs that uh, could become exhibits for, for uh, you know, a common initiative. And when we have arts exhibitions, when we have and trade, it's not just arts uh, exhibition and trade, but we have trade to be able to buy the, the cultural artifacts of other cultures to have something of the other with us, it keeps it renew good memories and good relationship building. And the exchange of two students. I am from the middle belt of Nigeria and I went to study in the west of Nigeria. And while I was there, I, I understand that the people of the west they, they have the impression that those of us at the middle belt when we want to go to school we have a tendency of going north. We, don't, we are unlikely to come north, south, uh, west of Nigeria. So it was very impressive to interact with them and to change misconceptions and to have them understand that we are all one people, one Nigeria. So when students are exchanged in programs like this, and if these programs are defined and developed and made into, into policies, it becomes very easy to bring cultures together to build a, a mutual understanding and to, to, to correct misconceptions. And uh, sports, 
as we listened in, in the last lecture we had, is, is also a very powerful tool of bringing people together when it is, when it is organized um, in a spirit of uh, friendliness. So these are the models of cultural diplomacy in peace building that I propose as tools for, for peace building um, in, in post-conflict zones in Africa. And uh, what are the challenges uh, we stand to face? Uh, there are already existing prejudices among cultures in Africa, and uh, it will be it will be very difficult. In of course, uh, in down the, the 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 PowerPoint I, I mentioned, closed societies to begin to bring these societies together, to have them to interact with each other. It will, sometimes it's very difficult, but. Sometimes it's just good that we start something and maybe allow it to develop gradually. And uh, there is cultural contestation. What do I mean by that? When you start a program that, uh, have to, uh, that, that has to involve other cultures, uh, every, uh, people seek uh, representation. Every culture wants to have a presence in a program. And uh, sometimes uh, it's, uh, some, some members of the, the other cultures may not be well qualified, but you have to, d to devise a method of including them somehow. Mm. So this may be a problem in trying to establish programs of cultural diplomacy as an option for peace building. But if we, if we have a program that we attend to a situation of cultural contestation, we make a foot at least uh, for, for a start. We have a problem of poor leadership and chronic underdevelopment in Africa. And uh, it is very important to note that sometimes uh, before you are able to bring cultures together, you should be able to meet uh, the, uh, you know, their basic needs. Uh, we have a poor leadership, we, we must accept that, but uh, it, it's, a, um, it's a condition that is changing and if we are able to, to deal with underdevelopment in, in, in main, most parts of Africa, it's easy to bring cultures together to have them interact. And then, the, the, of course, the issue of religious intolerance. You know, uh, in, in Nigeria, where I come from, we live as Muslims and Christians. And the far north doesn't accept that our, the, the religion of those who live in the south, uh, Christian religion, is not a good religion. So. They have to fight each other all the time. So how do we deal with this? I've, I've talked about uh, traditional and closed societies already. And then, of course, the issue of terrorism, uh, which has spilled over to Africa now and has become a big issue to deal with. What are our prospects? Economic growth and prosperity, peaceful coexistence, good governance, infrastructure development, globalization, and unity. And I conclude that uh, it is time for every government in Africa to establish an independent administrative institution for cultural diplomacy. And of course, where such does not exist. And these institutions will be, will, will be laden with the responsibility of creating explicit and structural pro uh, programs for unilateral and interstate cultural exchanges in each nation in Africa. I say unilateral first because, of course, charity begins at home. When we are able to unite the cultures within a state, then we'll be able to unite the cultures across the state. And cost and corruption should no longer be an issue because these are the, the, the facts we have to face. When a program like this has, you know, is, has to begin in Africa, we give excuses of, of, of uh, non-availability of funds and how corrupt our leaders are. But I think corporate organizations should begin to think independently on how this can be pushed to the appropriate authorities for uh, something to be done about it. So uh, thank you very much.